Hi, I'm Aurin and today I want to get started with my first custom keyboard build. So you may know that I'm into mechanical keyboards. I did go down the rabbit hole of building one myself. So the first one I had was the Keychron keyboard. Then I did go into the Corn. Uh, so this was my first custom build, but there I used a ready to use PCB. And the biggest problem with that was for me at least the thumb cluster. So I really don't enjoy the thumb cluster of the, of the corn. Uh, it doesn't feel nice and, and good for me at least. So I did go and build myself the Skeletool. So it's this one. The thumb cluster is definitely way better, but it's really high and also it's not like the perfect build for me. I have some issues with my index finger reaching the epsilon, so the top left in the right hand and the other way around. So it's a bit like not the perfect keyboard yet. And now I want to go down the rabbit hole of building one from scratch myself. So basically I am currently designing my own PCB. Uh, so there is a really good video of Ben Valak. He creates his own keyboards as well. Uh, and he basically also describes the whole process. And uh, I did quite a few things that he did as well and uh, tried to replicate it as myself. But I had a few things that are missing for me at least. So uh, I was quite afraid of building one myself and I'm currently in the process of doing so. And yeah, it it took me quite some time to research and to find the right things and, and everything. So I uh, want to take you on the journey with me uh, to build one yourself. And maybe you have some questions and uh, yeah, maybe I can answer some of them. And this is part one of two because I'm currently in the process of building the PCB or designing the PCB. And next step would then be to order everything um, build it together and test it out. So first of all, uh, as Ben also describes, we need to use ErgoGen. Uh, the first thing I was doing was basically using ErgoPad, uh, where you basically try to align the fingers with, um, yeah, with your typing. And I did it on my iPad as well. So basically, you go through the fingers, and this will then generate you how you want to place uh, the keys. So I did this and the result was basically this layout more or less. So I don't want to have it uh, too angled. So there are quite a few keyboard builds that have it quite angled. And then there are other keyboard builds that have it a bit uh, to the left and to the right. So it's super individual and there are so many builds out there. It's crazy. Yeah, but this is basically the layout I came up with or the layout that felt most comfortable for me. And this is not about building the next keyboard that is basically the new best ergonomic keyboard. It's just the next keyboard that is perfect fit for me. Uh, so don't just copy over the code or just copy over the PCB and build it yourself, but rather try to find a way to uh, build your own or yeah, maybe uh, find some inspiration. So what I did was basically creating this, um, this layout from scratch more or less. And the next step was finding a repository that has already mostly the work done. So this repository from Yozuki is basically uh, my start because it looks quite similar. He has also the same amount of rows and columns. So I was basically um, copying over his repository into a new one. So I cloned it into my own and copied over my configuration of the key layout. So this is basically his repository. Um, I copied over quite a few things. Um, first thing I did was basically defining the units. Um, you can use CX, CX and uh, C epsilon or you use U. U stands basically for the MX ones uh, because I want to build it with the MX keys and not the shock keys. And as you can see in his repository also, he is using the shock keys. Um, why the MX keys and not the shock keys? I built the corn keyboard with the shock keys. So I have it here, let me show you. Um, these are the shock keys. I use the uh, brown ones because they are the most silent ones. Uh, I like the, the blue ones, the clicky ones, but the yeah, it's an office setup. I use it in the office. I don't want to annoy everyone. So I use the brown ones. And to be honest, the feeling of the clicking, it's it's not for me. It's It's definitely not for me. I don't like the yeah, you don't have this tactile clicky feeling of the Akko switches. So I have the Akko cream blue here, uh, this one. And I, I really, is it? Yeah, I really enjoy typing on the Akko blue ones and they just feel way better than the 
brown ones. It's not as slim or flat, so it will be a bit higher. And as you can see, the, the height comparison is a bit different. It, the blue ones are a bit higher, but I personally prefer them. Yeah, so basically we define the points of all the, the key zones. So you have the main, the rows, columns, and this is basically where you define the, the, the fingers, the pinky, ring, middle, index, and inner. Uh, so you basically have for every finger uh, one column and then the thumb cluster and I uh, spread it not too much as you as you saw in the um, overview. So here, oh, where is it? It's not super spread it. So others do spread it way more or like uh, angle it way more, but I don't like it too much. So I try to stick with something that's not super spread it, but still has um, a bit of spread. Yeah, and then basically you just define all the outlines and this is not super interesting, but the next interesting part is basically the PCB because this is what we basically create or what, what the result is. Um, so we have the footprints, so we define the diodes. So I am using the matrix cluster, so it's with diodes. Um, that's why we have the diodes in here. And then I basically just changed from shock to MX. So if you uh, just replace shock with MX, you have the shock. And if you use the MX, you have the MX. Next step is to define the microcontroller. I will use a cheap microcontroller. So it's the um, Pro Micro in this case. It's a cheap one, basically a clone of the nice Nano. Uh, yeah, nice translation, Net Nano. So it's basically a Bluetooth controller. It's not as battery efficient as the uh, nice nano but it is extremely cheap so seven euros in comparison to the nice nano of 30 euros or something so i will use this one and it has the same uh outputs as the pro micro or then yeah it's in the end it's all the same um yeah pro micro alternative basically uh, that's why you can use or hopefully you can use the pro micro uh, also, this one I copied over more or less from a different repository again because I want to have it pretty that's always facing up and this we, we will see also in a, um, shortly. So I changed it a bit because the original one doesn't have the battery plugins or the battery pins. So I added them as well. Uh, it has, yeah, and that's that's basically it. Um, the other part we don't need to look too much into. It's basically just some clicky switches, reset switches, and on-off switches. And then we add some text, some front text, some back text. And yeah, I named it avocado. And also one thing I want to show you is basically my own code for creating an image. Uh, so you can write your own code to create images on the on the microcontroller. So I created my own image, put the shifting in, put where it should be and what it is. And what it is, is basically the name of the JavaScript file in the footprints uh, folder. So this one is avocado. So I, you need to take a look into the footprints pro folder avocado. If it's not a globally defined one, it must be in the uh, code here. So we go into the avocado folder and there I just have an array of points that is quite long. So it's basically all the points that we have in the image. So it's an image that I drew myself. Let me show you, or I, I not completely drew it myself. I took some inspiration from the internet, but basically it's an avocado that is showing the middle finger. I drew it on my iPad, just took a screenshot. And as you can see, this is a JPEG. So next thing we do is basically upload this picture here. I use Convertio, I upload the picture, it generates you an SVG. You upload the image here, you say it should be an SVG. Convert, this takes a second, it converts your image into an SVG. Download, I have the image now downloaded. Then I will optimize it a bit and as you can see 7 100 uh, 7 kb to 3 kb so we optimize it remove a bit of the stuff that we don't need uh, download and then you can just upload the same picture again to a path to point converter and then you have all the points in here so it's two paths and all the points are in here i copied over all the points into my code and this is basically then this one and this will be 
uh, on the UI in the end. So then we just run the uh, command of generating us the PCB. So yarn ergogen build. Uh, it will generate us the PCB into the ergogen folder. And yep, done. Now we open up KiCad or KiCut. So this is the program to lay out the PCB and also then upload it to any of the PCB providers. So we have a clean repository or a clean project. And now the tricky parts comes in. To be honest, this is something I'm still working on. So this is where it stops. So we have the output folder, PCBs, and then the avocado PCB. And here I have my PCB. Let's move it around a bit. Okay, so here I have the PCB. And as we can see, here we have also the avocado that is drawn on this and um, with like the code. Um, also, I can show you that this is also something interesting. So we have all the points and in the end, we just map all the points to the position, the scaling. I had to change a bit and then we just create a string that may basically says, okay, create a stroke with a solid no fill at the layer B mask or B C U, probably copper, I don't know. And um, it yeah generates the, the points or the puts the stroke in there. I did not fill it because this had some issues. So I have just the outline. And if you zoom in, you also see that it is just the outlines of the uh, points. Uh, ah, yeah. And the Pro Micro, I have a reversible one. So it is uh, always the same size up. So you have to solder these two points together. So this pin points to this. And if it's the other way around, it's uh, going basically from here to there on the other side, I hope. Yeah, not, not sure yet. <laughs> this will be quite interesting. So the, the end of the day is basically um, ordering everything, uh, draw all the points together and hopefully uh, order this PCB as well. Um, yeah, ah, yeah, one thing I also wanted to show I have another repository of the Goose 38. This one is um, also a not low profile one, but I like it a lot. It looks really slick. It has this key too much for me. So it should be like only these three keys, but, um, and also for me, it doesn't need to be that angled. Uh, so for me, it is a bit less angled, uh, but I really like this keyboard. It looks amazing. I really want to build one of these as well. Uh, and it has this rotary encoder. It's the EC12, I think. They included this as well. So I will also copy over parts of this repository into mine to also add this EC12 encoder into my code with the caps. This one was a topic that took me forever. So I have these um, standard caps that are, yeah, the, so I have these high ones and I have these DSA ones. They are a bit low, like lower. So they are not too much lower, but a bit, but also they have a smaller area to type on. And I prefer the, 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 the bigger area one, but these are lower. So I'm not sure yet what keycaps I will use. Um, I also found these amazing keycaps. Let me show you. They are also whew, really nice. Um, he has these low profile keycaps that look amazing. But unfortunately, shipping them to Europe is quite expensive. So it's six euros for 18 pack. You need two and then the same amount of, I don't know, 12 euros or something for the shipping. So it's around one euro per keycap. It's quite expensive, but they also look extremely nice. So if you have any idea, if there are some keycaps that look like this one for MX switches, please let me know down in the comments because I'm searching them forever. And if you want to be part of the part two, uh, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell. If you are interested in anything else, let me know down in the comments. I'm happy to go into more detail with the code or with any other stuff in this build. And also with the final product, I will show you the final product hopefully next video. Not sure about yet 
um, but this will be quite an interesting one and also if it is working. So make sure you are subscribed and uh, we will see us in the next part of this video. Um, I'm hopefully then ready to get started with the build. I will order everything in AliExpress uh, soon and also the PCB and I will also let you know what I ordered in the description. So if you want to order it as well, uh, happy to yeah, take the links and, and just get started with it. So my idea is to create it quite cheap. Let's see how this is going. And also the hot, the reversible part is super interesting for me. It is way more complicated to route everything in KiCad, but I am, um, yeah, challenge accepted basically. I'm quite interested in how this turns out. Um, yeah, and also I'm super interested in how this uh, turns out in the end as a PCB. Make sure you subscribe to Ben Valak. He creates amazing content and he also creates amazing content about the parts of what you need, how to build it. And yeah, I learned quite a lot from him. And now my idea is to build something on my own um, and yeah, get started with that. I'm not sure if I am doing it as a hot swappable yet. Um, probably yes, but this adds a bit more complexity again. Um, yeah. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and happy to see you next time. Thank you for watching and happy coding.